Okay, hi there. Welcome to another video in our welfare loss series. Let's take a look at the welfare loss uh, that can arise if a country introduces uh, an import quota. Well, a quota is uh, a limit on the quantity, the number, the volume of imports that you can bring into a country in a particular time period. So a nation might impose a quota on steel imports, tonnage of steel per year, for example, or the number of cars, the volume of new cars that can be imported. So a quota is a form of protectionism, and we would classify it as a non-tariff barrier. Sometimes countries uh, sort of mix and match their protectionist strategies. So you might introduce what's called a tariff-free quota, which limits how many imports can be brought into a country in a given time period before a tariff is applied. So any imports above and beyond the quota are then subjected to an import tariff. And we looked at the effect of a welfare uh, welfare effects of a tariff in a previous video. So let's look at uh, an import quota again. We'll take the example of pork. Let's say that a government introduces a limit on the, the amount, the volume, the tonnage, if you like, of pork products allowed into a country. The domestic equilibrium price is shown as the inter intersection between domestic supply and demand. Uh, if there is free trade without any quota, and if other countries can supply pork at more cheaply at price P1, then domestic pork producers will supply Q2. Domestic demand for pork will be high because import prices are low. So domestic demand is Q1. And therefore a high percentage of the market is met by imports. Now with a quota, <clears throat> what, you, what you're doing is saying, well, we allow domestic supply, clearly. But we're then going to allow domestic supply plus the quota. So the supply curve shifts out to the right because we're adding a given quota, a given quantity to the domestic supply curve. So that's why you draw that diagram as domestic supply plus quota. Of course, the bigger the quota, the further that curve will shift out to the right. But if you have a zero quota, a ban effectively, then the domestic supply curve is all that can be supplied to the market. So therefore, we have to now work with that domestic supply curve plus the quota and bring it into into play with the demand curve. And if we and the, I just quick reminder, the quantity, the volume, the size of the quota dictates the size of that dotted green line there. That shows the quantity of pork allowed in. Now, if you have the domestic supply plus the quota, then that's the new essentially the new equilibrium point in the market um, because you've now got a quota. The price will be higher than the free trade price. It's going to be P2 because you've artificially controlled or limited the volume of cheap pork that can come into a country. So we're now going to operate with price P2. Domestic supply plus quota meets the domestic demand curve. And at P2, the output will be Q3 because at that price, uh, the higher price for pork consumers are not willing or able to buy as much pork as they could before the price has gone up so there's been a fall in their in their real incomes now at at the higher price p2 domestic pork producers are better able uh, to supply to the market they're getting a good price now p2 for their pork so if you think about the incentive and signaling mechanism price mechanism there should be an expansion of supply assuming they can increase their supply to q from q2 to q4 <coughs> pardon me so with a quota, uh, the gap between imports and domestic demand is shortened to Q4, Q3, which is indeed the quota that will be filled by the market. So what about the welfare effects? So that effectively, a quota artificially limits supply prior to what had happened before. It drives the price up. It encourages domestic supply, uh, but discourages domestic demand. Let's think about the welfare effects. So I've added a few letters to, uh, to the diagram. If we think about consumer surplus before the quota, at very low prices for pork, consumer surplus was A, B, P1. A lot of consumer surplus because we could import pork products very cheaply. The world price was very low. After the quota, however, consumer surplus will fall because the price has gone up and demand has contracted. It will fall to area A, C, P2. So that's quite a big fall, a fall of P2. Uh, C, B, P1. So quite a big reduction in consumer surplus. So an import quota will damage consumer welfare. Now, some of that loss of consumer surplus goes to the producers. 
So it was used as surplus before the input quota was area P1FE. After the quota, output's gone up to Q4, so they've now got area P2DE. So there's an increase in producer surplus and also the fact uh, that their revenue has also gone up. So area FDG, FDG is extra revenue for the producers because they're now supplying more to the market. And that area previously was consumer surplus, so effectively that's a transfer to the to the uh, producers, domestic producers. Importers, well, they get some revenue. Uh, DCHG is the revenue going to importers. They're now selling uh, quantity, uh, Q4 minus Q3, and that quantity, they're now selling that at a higher price, P2. So they get the higher, they get, in that sense, they get the higher revenue, but they're limited in how much revenue they can get. Uh, but it used to be consumer surplus. That's now effectively a transfer to overseas producers, which means that the area CHB or CBH, whichever way you want to go around, is the deadweight loss of welfare, the pure deadweight loss of welfare due to an import quota. So import quotas, there will be a welfare loss um, because the increase in producer surplus is outweighed by essentially superseded by the decline in consumer surplus. So we're making domestic producers better off, but uh, domestic consumers are even more worse off. So that's a, a fall in, in economic welfare. Consumers with a quota, they pay higher prices than they would ordin ordinarily do with free trade. Higher prices depresses real incomes. And actually a quota can limit choice in the market as well because you're artificially restricting supply. And the risk is you create artificial shortages with quotas, which actually in some cases, uh, similar to maximum prices, can lead to, if you like, shadow market activities as people scramble for the limited volume of, of imports. That's the basic analysis. I'm, I'm not going to develop the evaluation too much here because you might want to talk about the impact of, you know, what about the quality of imports coming in? What happens to the overall quality? Does it go up? Does it go down? Uh, can producers bypass quotas in some other way? You can challenge and question the impact of a quota. But in this video, I just wanted to take you through the analysis of showing the welfare loss from an import quota. And there's a reason for doing so. Uh, import quotas are becoming more um, common. Uh, countries are essentially moving away a little bit from import tariffs towards non-tariff barriers, of which import quotas are a common, a frequent example. So this is an area of your trade and protectionism notes and revision that is definitely well worth spending a little bit of time on. Okay, thanks a lot. Take care. See you sometime soon.